Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are now in the Rabita Alawiyah National Summit in Pasuruan, East Java. Alhamdulillah, uh, in this gathering, in this summit, we are honored and blessed with the presence of our brothers, representatives from Rabita Alawiyah, Australia, Habib Muhammad bin Yahya and Habib Zainal Abidin al Jufri. Ahan wa sahlan. Alhamdulillah, uh, we are pleased, pleased to have you here. What is your impression for your visit to Pasuruan, East Java, to this national summit? Um, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rasulullah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa manwala. First of all, Jazakumullah khairan kathira, Habibina, for having us in this blessed uh, interview, Alhamdulillah. Indeed, this is from the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are here today. Uh, and I believe that uh, I feel very honored uh, to actually be invited um, over as a representative um, of the Alawiyin in Australia by our esteemed uh, leader, our Rais, Habibina Ustadina Tawfiq bin Abdul Ghadir Sagaf, Habibullah ta'ala. My first impressions, Alhamdulillah, this is my first time uh, to, uh, to Pasuruan. As they say in Indonesian, uh, this is Kota Santri. Due to the number of, uh, mashallah, religious institutions there are, there's a lot of religious institutions. And I feel, I feel immediately uh, blessed by, by this fact. And um, once one sets his foot into the um, location of the summit, I can't help but, but feel very warmly welcomed by the uh, esteemed uh, ushers and the committee members. Wa ahsan Allah ilaykum for your great effort. Amen. And um, it, uh, from my humble opinion, there's a lot to be learned from this. Uh, first of all, Rabbit Alawiya, as you know, is a very old organization. It predates the independence of, of Indonesia. And a lot of the founders of Rabbit Alawiya were actively involved in the uh, independence of, uh, of Indonesia and the prominent figures. But throughout time, you know, obviously, uh, Rabbit Alawiya had to change and adapt to the changes, which is especially with the wave of modernity. And Alhamdulillah, I feel coming from a Western state and you stepping foot into Rabat Alawiyah, you feel that Rabat Alawiyah is in tune with the changes of time. And most importantly, you can see that, you know, how they adapt and adopt the changes in the, in, in, in the form of technology, for example. When you see how, you know, the, the lightings on the stage, the media involved and the EV visual effects, and the setting up of the venue. This feels like uh, an international summit. And the food is amazing, mashallah. And the students who also serve as the welcoming committee, mashallah, make you feel at home immediately after you, uh, after, after, after you set foot. And this I can, I can only, um, from the bottom of my heart, uh, but only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can reward those people involved. And chiefly amongst them is ala ra'sihim habibina astaduna tawfiq. So Alhamdulillah, uh, this is our first time we feel very honored because our numbers are very few. As you know, uh, Alawiyin in uh, Australia and in New Zealand represent a very, very small minority of all the Alawiyin. So for us to be invited here, this is a huge honor for us. And when we received the invitation from Habibna uh, Sheikhan Sagaf, the Rais of Maktab Daimi, I, we had to book our flights. Eh? We, had, we had to uh, cancel all plans and make our way to come to this summit because this is gathering of great ulama and umara as well and like-minded people. So Alhamdulillah, we feel truly blessed and honored. Alhamdulillah. We are also pleased that uh, this is our first time. We have guests from other countries. Beforehand, we only gather people representatives from uh, cities and provinces from Indonesia only. We don't have any representative from other countries, as in Malaysia, Australia, mm -hmm. and others. So this is, mashallah, alhamdulillah, uh, we are blessed to have you here. So as you said before, uh, Alawin are minorities in Australia, in New Zealand. Not only Alawin, maybe, but also the Muslims yeah. in other countries. So I want to ask first that, how is the relationship between Islam and Australia, or New Zealand even? And how is da'wah there? How is Islam? developed over there? So Islam is a relatively new religion that has um, come in the shores of Australia. Uh, historically, the first ones to actually bring Islam to the fold of uh, Australia as a country were the Afghan um, cameleers. So people from Afghanistan 
who used to own camels and they used to bring their camels with them as a huge herd. Uh, and because, as you know, Australia is, is a vast land. It's basically um, a subcontinent. It's, it's so big that it has different time zones, just like Indonesia, but even bigger on a bigger scale. So over time, they established their small masjid here and there. There's one in Adelaide, there's one probably in Alice Springs as well. And the first masjid in, in Perth was actually, was actually built by the Afghan cameleers from Afghanistan in the early 1900s, um, in the 19th century. And after that, the, and Islam initially was practiced within their family. But I believe due to the lack of uh, the work of da'wah amongst their own community, what happened was they then intermarried with the locals. And before long, they lost their identity. And with it, they lost Islam. So you see a lot of Afghan people with uh, Afghan roots, you know, they still carry the, the Islamic name, but unfortunately they are only Muslims by name, but they, they do not practice Islam in general. Um, and that, as time went by, you had different waves of people migrating to Australia uh, and New Zealand to, the, uh, to a certain extent. From Perth, particularly, we have uh, the Cocos Malays. So Australia is a big country, but it has some small islands, namely the Cocos Islands and also Christmas Island that were in, inhabited by the Malays, who were mostly from Indonesia and some from Malacca as well. So as time went by, as you know, in the Malay culture, they were very in tune with certain practices that's very characteristics of the Tariqa uh, Ba'lawi as well. Like they're uh, very similar. For example, they um, uh, would recite Maulid al-Barzanji. Al it's a common practice. In fact, it's still practiced until now. Inshallah. So as time went by, when they migrated from Malacca and from Indonesia to these islands, they brought Islam with them. They brought their culture with them. And with it, uh, certain things like Tahlil, uh, recitation of uh, Maulid Barzanji, you know, and, and things like that. And they used to go uh, for a mass procession during the birth of the uh, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasul is actually a declared public holiday in Cocos Islands. Right. Yes. So as time, they, they came over and then they settled in and they built certain mosques. But then they largely remain within their own community. And as time went by, we had uh, more immigrants coming from throughout the world. Uh, we had the European immigrants initially. So with those people, we had the Bosnians. The Bosnians came. The Bosnians, the Macedonians, the Albanians, uh, or the former Ottoman countries, you know. So they, they came and they brought Islam with them as well. They established um, their own halal uh, slaughterhouses. And then after that, we had another wave of Muslims coming from the South African regions. Uh, most of them were South African Muslims of Indian heritage. Some of them were Cape Malays. Cape Malays of, of Cape Town in South, South Africa. And we had a subset of group from India, Pakistan, obviously. They, they have um, come as well. And along those waves, we also had people from Indonesia as well, in Malaysia and Singapore, who uh, migrated from their country of origin and made Australia their homes. And that some small minority amongst them are the Alawiyin as well. We also have a very, very relatively similar amount of number of um, the, the Hadrami, non Alawiyin Arabs as well, from the Mashaikh. The Mashaikh, naam, the Mashaikh from Indonesia who come and also have made uh, Australia their, their abode as well. So that's basically the fabric of, of the Muslims in, in Australia. And Alhamdulillah is them. And, uh, and of course, um, we, uh, in some countries or in some regions, for example, in New South Wales, we have a large presence of the Lebanese community. So, in, and for example, like how in Jakarta you have Chondet. Chondet, you, you, call, you call that mini Hadramot, right? Uh, so similarly in Lakemba, there's an entire stretch of street that makes you feel like you're in Beirut. They only speak Arabic, you know, and there's always, always um, uh, kapsa and, you know, mandi uh, restaurants and the books are all Arabic books and the masajid as well. All the khutbah is all done in Arabic, you know, so which, which makes Australia very unique because it's not, it's not um, monopolized. First of all, Muslims are minorities, as, as you know, from a Yes. Australia is a minority Muslim country. Actually, no, but it's, it's actually a non-Muslim country with Muslim minority. And, but it is formed by multiple different nationalities and, and cultural backgrounds as well, which brings a whole set of challenges, uh, unlike w the ones that you face in uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, or in the Rasantara region. Because in, in um, Australia, you have people, especially, for example, in the fiqh uh, perspective, you have people who ascribe to Shafi'i Madhab, to Hanafi Madhab. There's a lot of people who ascribe to Hanafi Madhab. A lot of people uh, in, in the Northern African region, you have uh, like the Sudanese, 
We have a few, uh, and then they all ascribe, and the, the Northern African countries like Tunisia, Morocco, who reside in Australia, they ascribe to the Maliki Madhab, you know? So we have a different, different subgroups of Muslims within the Muslim, uh, within the Muslim community. So this brings a lot of challenges, you know, for as a, as a practicing Muslim. And then to add another layer of complexity, you have people who also have just learned their religious uh, or started their religious journey or who have just recently converted to Islam, being a non-Muslim before this. So then they are looking for ways to, to learn Islam. So this is my experience. This is what, what we are facing as a Muslim society that is fairly new. But what I can say, it is it's a growing uh, community, mashallah. Uh, they recently did a census to, into the number of Muslims residing in Australia. Uh, and in Perth alone, in, in West, Western Australia alone, we have more than 50,000 Muslims. And these are all people who actually put their names down. So there are obviously some people who did not fill up the census. So my estimation is probably more than that. And in other big major cities like, cities like Sydney and Melbourne, and in Auckland, there's even more people, more Muslims, subhanAllah. We have more than 20, 24 masajid there as well, and more emerging as well. So it's definitely a growing uh, community, mashallah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. We also love that. The communities grow, grow and grow. Yes, stronger, uh, and the da'wah over there develops uh, faster and faster. Inshallah. I mean, I mean, inshallah, I mean. So you mentioned in those minority com minorities uh, communities, the Alawin is also there. This may be news for some people. Yeah. Some people, uh, even I didn't know. I I didn't know. I, I just maybe found it recently, in the recent years, that there is Alawin in in Australia. Oh. So maybe. How is the how is the story then? How is the story that, that how Halloween enters Australia and perhaps even New Zealand? Mm. So to answer your question, we have a classic example of the um, the, the Halloween who basically was of was a product of that um, migration basically. So we have um, the Halloween main majority of them are from the Nusantara region, uh, and then the uh, majority of them are from Indonesia. Uh, but some from Malaysia and Singapore as well, and they come, they come for initially for for work, and when they uh, and it's only it's only been recent, unlike the Habaib who migrated uh, hundreds of years ago to uh, Indonesia, uh, the wave of the Alawiyin is relatively recent, probably as recent as 1960s, the 1970s, and some of them they come for work for a bit for a few years and then they go back to the country of origin, but some choose to reside and and remain. In Australia as well, um, a classic example is the family of the um, Maula Dawila family in Melbourne, who I think is in relation of the the late Al Marhum uh, Habib Mustafa uh, Salim Maula Dawila. I believe he has family in Melbourne as well. One of his uh, close relatives or siblings uh, migrated from Indonesia. I think they were from Malang. I'm not sure from Malang. Uh, and then they came to Melbourne in the 1970s uh, with a few family members. And then from there, they, they remained there and, they, uh, and then they uh, had their progeny. So they had children. And now the children have now married and then they've got grandchildren as well. So we're talking about now a third generation of Alawiyin residing in, in Melbourne. Sure. So subhanAllah. And these are people who, are, who, who, um, who reside, who basically were born and bred in Australia. So they have some relations with the Nusantara in terms of their origin, in terms of the tariqah, but from life, day-to-day -day life, they are Australian and they hold Australian passports. They speak a bit of, some, some of them, uh, they speak like Australian English and then some of them can speak um, Bahasa as well. I, I think majority can speak Bahasa, but their main language is actually English. So we have here um, Sayyid Zainal Abidin bin Umar al Jufri. Mashallah, you can, have, you can uh, tell us a bit more about your you know, life history, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. alaikum salam wa Alhamdulillah. Blessed to be a part of the event, the summit in uh, Basurwan, accompanying Habib Muhammad bin Yahya from Perth. Um, so I was actually um, born and raised in Darwin, a small, a, small, a small town in the Northern Territory, the Northern parts of Australia, in these parts you don't we don't we don't actually have any other Halloween family now they're um residing there so it was only my family and my dad's uncle who was there originally so my dad's uncle originally went there to go there for for work and then 
he brought my dad after high school to go there also to look for some work and fortunately my, my dad decided to yeah, migrate there and alhamdulillah um, also met my my mother there who's uh, Australian. Oh sure so your mother is originally Australian. My mother's Australian and my love alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Australian Caucasian. Yeah. So um, I think the biggest thing about um, I guess learning the about about the Alawian family is my dad's kind of influence and link for us to frequently revisit Indonesia. I probably only really discovered about Rabita Alawiya maybe when I was about ten years old. I had my buku nasab done. Um, in 2003, so I had my Buku Nasab done and probably that's um, what kind of triggered me to start learning a bit more and understanding about the Alawian family family tree and understanding the importance of the teachings and how we can, how we need to kind of know who we represent. So Alhamdulillah, um, we're now residing in Perth and with, uh, I guess, a bigger Alawian family there There's still in small numbers, hundreds, <laughs> but um, inshallah we can, um, we will, we will um, grow there inshallah and we can um, invite people to come visit and see what, see what's by us. Inshallah, inshallah. Uh, so, uh, let me ask you, sir, as you, as your upbringing is a very unique one, uh, how is the culture that, uh, how is the, how do you, how do you find your culture? I mean, how do you see the Alhamdra is it different from what you see in Indonesia, maybe in Malaysia as well, as Alawi and family, as an Alawi family? Uh, what's the difference there as well? Uh, over there, uh, I guess the, the biggest thing is being the, being the minority, especially in particular with the Alawi and family. And in Darwin, like, um, there, was not, there was not much to see there um, in terms of our culture. So, um, but it's also interesting in the same point where you kind of learn the different um, the different tariqah of uh, Islam and all the different um, people coming from all the different cultures and you, you kind of start learning more because you want to understand why are people doing things different to how like how we, we practice it as a family, how my, how my dad's taught me to do things and um, so I guess and integrating with society obviously in the culture with the wider western western culture as well we just, um was it was always a challenge for me um we we actually didn't have any islamic schools or any anything like that we only had like a weekend madrasa or a listen school holiday madrasa to go to um so it, it was quite fundamental in that um my parents kind of instill the right um, knowledge to, yeah, to, for me to carry on the um, learning about the Alawiyan. So how is Tariqa Alawiya being perceived there? How is, how is being... The perception of the... the perception yeah. of the perception of the people, perhaps even from Alawiyan family itself, how do they, they perceive Tariqa Alawiya? Um, I think it's quite a new concept there, and I, I think um, Habib Muhammad might be, might be able to answer that better than me. Uh, I think um, the, it's yeah, until quite recently there was there was not a lot known about it, and the, I guess the perception was of Ahlul Bayt one might might not have been of the of the one of Alawiyin, and, and it was not it was just not known. Not that there was any perception or anything about it, but Habib Muhammad might have a better. Anything you want to So, um, yeah, I mean, Tariqa uh, Alawiya, certain uh, facets of the Tariqa is actually w already well well ingrained in certain societies, but they did not know that it was actually part of the Tariqa. For example, like I mentioned earlier on, the um, uh, Malay community who, ori you know, who originated from Christmas Islands and Cocos Islands, they, they routinely would, would, would recite the Halili. And as, as you know, as Habib, Habib, uh, all the of our scholars mentioned, including Habib al Tawfiq, uh, Sagaf, mentions that Tahlil was actually something that was uh, introduced by the Habaib, you know, that is, all, that is so ingrained in the Mali community that they do not see that that is actually something different from their culture. So, um, and it is something that they, they hold, hold on truly to. So the Malays, until now, they would still have, they will celebrate Maulid, they will recite Maulid Barzanji, 
Uh, they would uh, do tahlil of the mayit as well. And similar cultures that's actually practiced in the Nusantara. And we also had another subset of uh, Muslims there called, called the Cape Malays. So the Cape Malays were originally from, they had their origins from Makassar, from Indonesia. Uh, as you know, one of the great uh, scholars who migrated uh, to South Africa, he was actually a prince. I believe he's uh, either, uh, yeah, his name is uh, Tuan Guru Yusuf, uh, or Yusuf Al, Al Makasiri. Uh, so basically, he's from Makassar and he's someone that is very steeply learned in the tariqa, Alawiyin. So when he was expelled by the Dutch, as you know, you, uh, Indonesia was once uh, imperialized or colonized by the Dutch. So when, when he was expelled by the Dutch uh, community, because as you know, Dutch also colonized South Africa at one, at one point in time, in order to reduce his influence, because not only was he of noble lineage, but he was also a scholar as well. So he had the, the perfect storm to cause havoc <laughs> in, the, in the community, right? Aye. So the, the Dutch exiled him out into South Af uh, to, to Cape Malay, to South Africa. But rather than using that opportunity to be sad and to be depressed, he saw that fertile opportunity to spread Islam. And a lot of Islam Muslims uh, became Muslims as, as a result of his da'wah. And with him, they, they also came some, some Malays as well that came with him, or Indonesians came with him, then which married into the locals. And when he brought Islam with him, he also took the tariqa Sada uh, Ba'alawi as well with him, including the recitation of Ratabul Haddad. But because back in the day in South Africa, they were under the apartheid uh, government, you know, so they weren't allowed to express their Islam outrightly. So they would gather together and then they would compile a uh, number of litanies, number of altar, including tahlil, including parts of uh, Aratibul Haddad, and then they would chant it like a music, like like choir. So until now, you would still find the Mal Cape Malays, they would decide, they don't call it Ratibul Haddad, they call it uh, the Haddad Ratib, or just the Ratib, for example. They will call it just that, but they do not know who it came from. But this is something that is ingrained in their culture. They recite this every Thursday night. So when we came, I mean, uh, obviously the, 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 the tariqa ba'alawi is not something new. But those people who were practicing it, they did not know the origins of the tariqa. And in some circumstances, even the alawiyin who came, uh, who migrated to Australia and New Zealand, um, sometimes, you know, because of pressures of work and trying to blend into the society, uh, they, they, they forget their, their origins and as a result, the tariqa alawiya is actually not practiced in the in the family. So, um, like what Zainal was was mentioning, it is uh, it is something that that we are trying to revive back uh, and trying to uh, sort of um, put sense into it as well and to educate the community as well. What is challenging about that is that um, we live, as you know, we live in a multi-faceted faceted uh, society with uh, Muslims from different backgrounds as well. So we have. And everyone have got their own practices in place. And they are in the culture of questioning. Every single thing you do, what is the dalil? Is this from the Prophet Sallallahu or is this not? I'm sure you, you are also aware of, the, of a similar culture here as well. So, which means that the majority of the awam, the um, laity amongst the society, they aren't able to fend for their practice, right? Uh, and, and as a result, over time, they, it just gets diluted and they do not practice it anymore. And this is why we need da'wah, basically. In a place like, like Australia, in a place where uh, they place a lot of importance on knowing why you're doing certain things, this is a first, uh, you know, very um, fertile opportunity for, for da'wah to, to teach other people. So alhamdulillah, over the years, it's actually been the non alawiyin who's been the, uh, promoting tariqa ba'alawi, believe it or not. So in Perth, mashallah, we have um, a group of uh, enthusiastic Muslims, mashallah, headed by Sidi uh, Azizi Khalid, who founded, uh, a, a, what do you call that, an um, organization called Qaswa House. And they are non, -Alaw they are non sada non alawiyin okay? But they're muhibbin. And in their syllabus, and they run like, um, they, they run like a um, uh, daycare, uh, an Islamic sort of daycare for Muslim students to come. Part of the syllabus is to teach them Ratib al-Haddad, Waradu Latif, the Adhkar, the Hizb al-Nasr, Boma ila ghayri, you know? So they become the, the ones that is upholding that. 
And um, and recently, of course, we have we also have a big group of the Indonesians as well who've, who've migrated, uh, who are non again non sadas but muhibbin, you know. And we have presence of NU in Australia as well, which I'm I'm not sure whether you are aware or not, but NU Ahlul Ulama they've got branches um, in Australia and in New Zealand as well. And as you know, they are they walk hand in hand with Rabbit Alawiyah in terms of and and also the Tariqa Alawiyah. So you, in fact, you have. Uh, the, 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 the Indonesians and the Singaporeans as well practicing Tariqa Ba'lawi as well and in a masjid called Masjid Ar-Rukun which is down uh, in uh, Rockingham again in, in Perth built by the Malays they now uh, as a, fa- a form of um, how should I say reviving the practice they have a one a fortnightly majlis called uh, to, to, uh, to recite Alat ibn Attas as well over there so this is something. It is. Uh, it, it is still work in progress. It will take a lot to actually, um, you know, to, to be successful, because we are so small in number as well. So we need the support of large, larger organizations like Rabbit Alawiya. We need scholars as well to come to help us, you know, propagate this work as well, to educate the the masses, to know that what we are doing is in fact in line with the Quran and the Sunnah and the Salaf as well, because unfortunately the term Salaf is a very popular term now everyone wants to say that no we, what we're doing is according to the salaf we're doing everything according to the salaf you know the salaf of salih and then everyone who do not follow their way they call them the mubtada you know so this is a huge issue that we are facing at the moment and when we when we tell them that we are also from the salaf it is something new for them they're like oh mashallah how can you be salaf and you, your practice is different to us so this requires a lot of retraining and education as well because the enemy of uh, uh, because uh, how shall I say? You are the enemy of what you do not know. So we have to break the cycle of ignorance by education, unfortunately. But this is the way it is. Alhamdulillah. How the Prophet ﷺ made da'wah, this is how we should also make da'wah as well. Uh, and sometimes I feel why, why the, the, the Habaib just stopped in Indonesia and did not go to uh, Australia back in the day, you know? <laughs> Otherwise, we'd have more presence of, 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 of uh, Alawiyin. But in saying that, Alhamdulillah, Allah has favored given us the opportunity, you know, and allowed us to actually carry the banner of Sada al Ba'lawi in those lands as well. And to bring the teachings, to educate the people, you know, as well, which is a, just a huge res- responsibility. So, and Alhamdulillah, recently as well, we've had uh, presence of ulama from the Sada al as well. In fact, before this, uh, we had even scholars who, who resided in, in, in Australia who are also from Sada, uh, Sada al Ba'lawi as well. Who serve there in the capacity of religious uh, religious mufti as well as imams of masajid as well, um, but people come and go in Australia, so we need to build a, a, a strong foundation. And and of late, we also had locals or local Muslims there who send their students to Hadramaut. So when they come back, they're again non sada, but they bring the tariqa al balawi to back to Australia as well. An example of this is a a, a place in Sydney, yeah? a place in Sydney called Dar, Dar ibn Abbas. Dar ibn Abbas. Uh, the sheikh, who, the, the imam of that place, is a muhibbin. And I believe he's also a uh, sada, but from Sayyidina Hassan. Uh, originally from Algeria or Tunisia, uh, uh, I stand to be corrected. But his students went to study and then he came back. And one of the things that they used to do every Thursday night is to recite the mawalid as well. You know, and, and the qasaid, umma ila ghayri. You know, that is, a, it is ascribed and attributed to the sad, sada al Balawi as well. Beautiful mosque, a lot of people come, and this is a form of education as well. Uh, and I believe, inshallah, with time, you know, we are, we're just starting this process. So, inshallah, with time, we'll have more people to come and support us, and, you know, more programs, inshallah, to help the public, you know, be aware. And the other thing is, we are, we are not just one, we're just, not just a, a single fabric. Like in Indonesia, most of the Indonesian Muslims are Shafi'i. Most of them are Shafi'i in their madhab. In Australia, we are dealing with different school of uh, fiqh madhahib uh, and also different madhahib of aqidah as well different languages and on top of that you have to teach Islam in English to them as well and the level of Islamic knowledge amongst them is very very variable some of, some of them have some knowledge and some of them have no knowledge whatsoever um, so there's a lot of work to be done and uh, yeah I keep on stressing the, this, this fact because this is true and Alhamdulillah, I think having an um, opportunity to have to, to be part of the summit like this injects that much needed boost for us to continue our work there, inshallah, bi'idillah. Yeah. 
Alhamdulillah. Uh, as you said, this is just a start. Inshallah. And inshallah, a lot of progress in the coming years, inshallah. I mean, inshallah. So lastly, I want to ask from both of you, maybe you have some messages to Rabbi Ta'alawiyah particularly and or Alawiyin or Ummah as a whole. Maybe from Muhammad Zainal first. Uh, I think if there's any message, we'd just like to welcome any, anyone and everyone to come and visit us, inshallah, in Ferdinand uh, or in, um, in Australia. There's many Sada that we're quite welcoming to sit. We want to see our family and um, have uh, guest speakers and host, host everyone, inshallah. Um, I think if we can continue having a link with monthly classes and having guest speakers come, we can, inshallah, maintain the, the learning and the, continue with um, our family traditions. Mm. So, um, just like what the word Rabita means, is actually a link or network, you know, of the Alawiyin Zada. So, our sincere and humble request is that whatever you do, do not forget the Alawiyin that's outside of Indonesia as well. I know, mashallah, the, the Indonesian Alawiyin, they are, they are the majority, they, they, they form the bulk of the Sada Alawiyin throughout the entire world. You have diaspora, you have some groups of Alawiyin in Malaysia, in Singapore, in Brunei, in parts of uh, India, you know, and in parts of Tanzania, Kenya, as well, and in uh, Zanzibar, in Nigeria as well. MashaAllah. But the majority is in Indonesia. Um, my humble request is to always include us in your in your dua, include us in your all your works of da'wah as well. And there, as as much as there needs to be more, uh, in, because like like the saying goes, kun ibn zamanik, uh, kun ibn makanik was zamanik. You know, be the the child of your time and your place. And how I see this beautifully um, practiced by the uh, by Rabbi Alawiya in the sense that you have, mashallah, a very strong media presence. You know, in the social media realm. Um, and I think it's beneficial as the content is in Indonesian, you will reach a far larger audience if you were to cater to the English-speaking Muslims. Because at the, at, the moment, at the moment, it is somewhat dominated by a certain group of people who are English-speaking, and they dominate that front, which, makes, which gives um, an impression that Islam is only universion. There's only one version of Islam to be practiced. So I think, inshallah, as time goes by, we need to we need to we, we need to make uh, more effort, inshallah, uh, uh, to to introduce this to the world, inshallah, as well. And uh, in in Australia, what makes it unique is that uh, not all of the Alawiyin are from Nusantara. There are some who are from India, from Hyderabad, some from uh, Abu Dhabi, some from Tarim as well, and they've made Australia their home. So they are actually in in a way they are linked with Indonesia, but they are not Indonesians. And most of them do not speak fluent Indonesian. So therefore, there's a huge untapped market who speak and converse and deal with English as their language. So, and again, it's a huge fertile ground for da'wah as well. And I think um, what really helps to cement this is by visitation of scholars. You know how the, in the past we have great uh, ulama of Hadramaut who came and visited lands um, to renew the links. You know, you had, like, for example, Habib uh, Abdul Ghadir Saga, for example. Huh? You had the likes of uh, Abuya Sayyid Muhammad Al Maliki, uh, Muhammad bin Alwi Al Maliki Al Hassani. And he has, the, by, by virtue of his visit in a particular place, it has caused and it, it has um, the ripple effect and influence a lot of, uh, you know, a, um, a change within the fabric of society. So this is what we need as well. Every now and then, we need to uh, have our, um, how shall I say, spirits re-injected by their presence. And like what Zainal was saying, one of the ways, as one of the tariqa, one of the five pillars of tariqa ba'alawi is ilm. So then, because we are a fertile ground, we need more efforts for knowledge-based discussions, knowledge-based classes. And alhamdulillah, now we are not limited by geographical uh, differences. Geography does not separate this anymore. We may be in Australia, we may be in New Zealand, but with Zoom, you can have a real-time conversation and we can have classes. And with the wealth of the scholars that is 
present and involved in Rabat al Alawiyah, we are confident that inshallah, we're able to tap into that potential. And you also have a, a lajna as well, like a department of uh, uh, da'wah and tarbiyah as well. This can, mashallah, be, in, we can be included in that group as well. And the vision of, mashallah, I see Habib Tawfiq as someone that is a visionary. Not only is a scholar, not only is he as, as a leader of a multinational organization, but on top of that, he is a visionary. He is, he is someone that has a very wide perspective and a very futuristic perspective as well to prepare our children and our progeny for the future, for the challenges of the future. So you have a lot of uh, people who ascribe and he says that the Rabat al is not only meant for Sada al but also meant for people who follow the Tariqa al And you must understand the effect of the uh, Tariqa al is far and wide. And a lot of them speak English. A lot of them converse in English. So, mashallah, this is a huge, huge potential that I see. That inshallah will will definitely benefit from 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 their presence, inshallah, as time goes by. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I believe. So, and 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 lastly, I want to I want to mention as um as an uh how shall I say um advice for the Alawiyin. As the Alawiyin uh, residing wherever you are in Australia or, or in New Zealand, uh, my sincere um, advice is, inshallah, is to take the time to know who your roots are, what your root is, and who you represent, and represent and what teachings you belong to. MashaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us amongst all the other progenies and all the other tribes by making us from the Nasab of Rasulullah, which means that this is a double edged sword. You know, which means that if you do good, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply, will reward you double. And if you, but unfortunately, if you fall in the depths of sinning, then your punishment is also double fold as well. And when you know this, you know the position of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the honor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and who you represent, you would want to act like him. You would want to be like him. You want to represent and make your your usul, your your ajdad, proud, and chiefly among them is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and to take like his akhlaq, kana kana khuluq al Quran, kana ahsan al nasi khalqan wa khuluqa, you know, to become like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to embody the characteristics of who Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is, and that can only be achieved through education. So inshallah, the more we have programs, the more realization of who they are, and the more they want to become like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And to take upon the practice upon the salaf. I, I just had to add that, that last bit, inshallah, as a reflection for myself and for all of my beloved brothers and sisters, you know, the Alawiyin community outside the Nusantara region, inshallah, who's listening to this, inshallah. May Allah protect us all, inshallah, I mean, and safeguard all of us, inshallah, our children, inshallah. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Again, Jazakallah Khair for this interview. This, I believe, this will enlighten a lot of Alawiyin. A lot of the Ummah, inshallah. So for our, for our audience, thank you for listening to this interview. Hopefully we met you the upcoming programs, inshallah. Inshallah in Australia next year. Inshallah, yeah. Tafadal. Ahlan wa sahlan. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.